Hi guys, welcome to another video by Darkling Does Math. The content in this video is geared towards 6th grade math standards. These videos are public so that my students may access this information easily, as well as anyone else looking for math help. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do not, I hope you can find what you're looking for elsewhere. There's a lot of information out there. Be aware that I'm not perfect, so there may be the occasional mistake. I apologize in advance if this should happen. So today we're going over 11.4, which is just various scenarios or problems with surface area and volume. So our first practice problem says a rectangular fish tank 60 and a half centimeters by 15 centimeters by 34 centimeters is one third full of water. Find the volume of water needed to fill the tank completely. So a couple things. It's already one third full. And the question specifically states, find the volume of water needed. So be aware of how problems like this might be worded. The problem might say how much water is in the tank or left in the tank. It might ask what is needed. It might ask how much water can fit in the tank. So in this case, it's saying how much is needed. We need to be aware that one third is already in there. So we are wanting to know what is two thirds. Two thirds is what we need, and that's going to be the focus on this problem. We're going to ignore the one third. Okay, so first, 60 and a half by 15 by 34. When you see this pattern, it typically means length by width by height. So it's already labeled for us, actually. Length is 60 and a half, and this is a typo. It should say centimeters. And width is 15 centimeters, and 34 centimeters is your height. <clears throat> All right, so where do we start? There are a few different options. The easiest option would be to straight up find the whole volume of the tank. Find out how much water you can actually fit in it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find the volume of the whole tank. How much water can you fit? Since it's a rectangular prism, we're going to do volume equals length times width times height. So next, volume equals, what's the length? 60 and a half. What's the width? 15. And what's the height? 34. Next, volume equals 60 and a half times 15. Is 907 and a half. And we're going to bring down our multiply by 34. So 907 and a half times 34 is 30,855. And this is volume, so it's going to be centimeters to the power of three. Now, is this our answer? No, this is the whole tank. The question doesn't say find the volume of the whole tank. It says find the volume of water needed to fill. So since I need only two thirds of that tank to be filled up the rest of the way, that means all I need to do is take my full volume and multiply by what I need. I only need two thirds of that number. I don't need the full volume. So we're going to take 30,855 and find two thirds of that, which is 20,570. And again, this is volume. So it's going to be centimeters to the power of three. So our answer, how much water is needed to fill the tank? We're going to say 20,570 cubic centimeters of water is needed to fill the tank. Now, I said there were a few other ways you could do this. One other approach would be 
to find, since I only need two thirds of it to be filled, you'll notice the length would stay the same, width would stay the same, but instead of the full height of 34 centimeters, I only need two thirds of that. I could take two thirds of 34, which is 22 and two thirds, and take 22 and two thirds times 15 times 60 and a half. So two thirds of 34 centimeters, that would be my new height, multiply by 15, the width, by the length of 60 and a half, and I still get the same answer, 20,570. All right, next example. A block of wood is in the shape of a trapezoidal prism and it has the dimensions shown in the diagram below. Why is this a trapezoidal prism? Because I see a trapezoid and another trapezoid that are parallel to each other of equal size. So those are my bases, not necessarily because they're on top and bottom, because I have two identical congruent shapes parallel to each other. Okay. If the volume of the prism is 60 cubic centimeters, then find the height of the prism. So the height of the prism is the distance between the two bases. So the one base and second base are on the top and bottom. So I want this distance right here. All right, so what do I do? Well, if they give me the volume and I want height of prism, I'm going to use the volume formula of volume equals area of base, which is capital B, times height of prism, which is lowercase h. Okay, let's see if I can solve it. The volume is 60 equals area of base. Do I know the area of the base? No. That means, road trip, we need to find that first. So we're going to find the area of the base and we're going to do that first. So what is the shape of the base? A trapezoid. That means I need to use a trapezoid formula. Area of a trapezoid is equal to one half times height of trapezoid times base one plus base two, again, of the trapezoid. So ignore any of the rectangles. Okay, so I don't know area equals one half. What's the height of the trapezoid? If my parallel lines are my bases, meaning base one and base two, that means the distance between them at a right angle is my height. So this is my height of the trapezoid. So going to put three right there. Now, what are my bases? Seven is one of my bases plus this is my other base. I don't see the number. So I look at its identical twin up here and I see that that second base is three. All right, let's solve. Parentheses first. So one half times three times seven plus three is 10. Next step, A equals one half of three is 1.5. Bring down our multiply by 10. So area equals one and a half times 10 is 15. Now, this is capital A. Capital A stands for area. I just found the area of the base. Area of the base also is represented by capital B. So 15 is not only my capital A, this is also my capital B. This is my area of the base. So I'm gonna put 15 right here. So we're going to continue with this, which happens to be our second step. We tried to do it first, but we realized we couldn't continue it, which is perfectly fine. We found what we needed. All right, what's this height? Is it three? No, this is a different context, a different formula. So this is volume equals area of the base times height of prism. And actually that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to leave that as H. Didn't really need parentheses. Okay, so we're going to solve for H. So I need to get rid of the 15. So I'm gonna divide by 15 on both sides. 15's cancel, leaving me with H 
equals 60 divided by 15 is 4. We just found the height of the prism to be 4 inches. So that's going to be our answer. The height of the prism is 4 and is not inches, my bad. Centimeters. Always pay attention to labels. An inch is not the same size as a centimeter. All right. So, first step was technically find the area of the base to use in our formula to solve for the h or height of prism. All right. Next step. Same problem, just an extra question. Find the surface area of the wooden block now. So, if you want to find surface area, you're essentially going to find the area of all surfaces. To make that easy for yourself, I would recommend drawing nets. Unless it's required, then you'll have to do it anyways. So, our net contains four rectangles and two trapezoids. So, I'm going to start by drawing my four rectangles. It's not drawn to scale. Okay, next, I have two trapezoids that are gonna fold up and down to form my top. Notice it's almost like a rectangular prism or a cube. You could almost mistake it, but you'll notice that the sides are not all equal. So I'm going to kind of have a similar setup. So I'm gonna put this trapezoid right here and the bottom one just on its opposite side. Okay, so four rectangles that wrap around the trapezoid and it's definitely not drawn to scale. Okay, so we're gonna label it. So let's start with the trapezoids. The top of the trapezoid is three, the bottom of the trapezoid is seven, the slanted side is five, and that right angle portion is three. Again, if you miss that, so this side was three, the slanted side was five, the bottom was seven, and that right angle portion connecting the bases was three. So kind of like triangular prisms where we focus on the triangle, now we're focusing on the trapezoid. <clears throat> okay, now the rectangles. This is going to snap shut with this, so this is going to be five. And then the other two are going to match up with these two sides. So this is gonna close in on this one. This is gonna wrap around onto the top and be three. And this is gonna wrap around all the way over here and also be three. Now, what's the distance between the trapezoids? We just found it. We found the height of the prism to be four, and that happens to be the length of those rectangles. All right, now all we have to do is find the area. Don't forget, we've already done some work. We already found the area of those trapezoids to be 15. So let's not do that again and waste our time. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill those in with those answers. So that means really all I have to do is find the area of a bunch of rectangles. And those are super easy. So rectangle number one, area equals length times width. So area equals three times four. So area equals 12. Are there any shortcuts? Well, this one is also three by four. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in with 12 also. Next rectangle, it's five by four, so it's different. So area equals length times width, area equals five times four. So area equals 20. Last, this one's seven by four. So another formula, area equals length times width, area equals seven times four, so area equals 28. One, two, three, four, five, six faces. So let's add six areas. So 15 plus 15 for the trapezoids and then the rectangles, 12, 12, 20, and 28. What do you get? No idea, let's find out. So 15 and 15 is 30 plus your 
24 for the two 12s, and then the 20 and the 28, we're going to get 102. And this is area, so it's going to be centimeters squared, because area is how many squares will cover a surface, whereas volume is how many cubes will fill up a solid or a place. Okay, so let's write our answer. The surface area is 102 centimeters squared. All right, next example. A square prism of height 11 inches has a volume of 539 cubic inches. Find the length of each side of the square base. So, first, let's note that this is a square, so all sides are equal. And I essentially want the length of each side. So I technically just want the length and width of what the square is. And they're going to be the same number. Okay, next, I want to find, because I want to find the length of the square base, and the only information they give me is height of prism and volume of prism, chances are we're going to need a volume formula, and since it includes height of prism, I want the volume equals area of base times height of prism. So, that's our first step. I want volume equals area of base times height of prism, so capital B times H. I don't want to necessarily use the V equals LWH. It's too many unknowns. I don't have enough information. So next, my volume is 539 equals area of the base. Do I know the area of the base? No. Do I know the height of the prism? Yes, it's 11. Now, if I had tried this with V equals LWH, I would have had two letters that I don't know. That would have been more complicated. All right, next, I want to solve for capital B. So I'm going to divide by 11 on both sides. And I get capital B, or area of the base, is equal to 539 divided by 11 is 49. So... 49, this is your area of the base. The square base, to be exact. So that means that top square and the bottom square have an area of 49. So I still need to find the length and width of that. So what am I going to do? Write another formula and think about it. So second step, what's the formula for area of a square? Well, there are a couple variations. There's area equals length times width, or there's area equals length squared. That's the one I'm going to use because it has fewer letters. So area equals length squared. Again, this is for a square. What does length squared mean? It means length times length, because if you think about it, the length and the width are the same, so it's pretty much the length times the same number. Do I know the area of the square? Yes, it's 49. We just found it right here. So 49 equals L squared, or L times L. So this is small enough that you could think, what number times the same number is 49? And I know that's going to be 7. But what if the number is larger and you can't figure that out? There's a very specific procedure to follow, and it will allow you to figure that out. What is it? It's called square root. So remember, to get letters by itself, I do the opposite of what they're doing. So if I wanted to undo multiplication, I divide. This is squaring. So to get 1L by itself, instead of L times L, I'm going to do the square root. Do it to both sides. Again, this is square root. And it means what times what is a number 
And no, that's not a division sign. So square root of L squared is just going to be L. Now, square root of 49. How do you use a calculator to calculate that? Um, there are methods by hand. We're not going to go over those at this point. So all you need to do is push second button, the x squared button, and you'll notice the square root symbol pops in, and you type in the number you want. So I want square root of 49. Push equals, and I get 7. So I'm going to note that right here. Push the second button, and then the x squared button. <clears throat> What's your other option again? It's basically guess and check, and that could take forever if it's a large number. So I would have A equals L to W, then I would have 49 equals, well, length times width, and I don't know, that's multiple letters, and if they're too big, you won't know. So 49 equals, you have to think, what times the same number? Well, it'd be seven. So back to this, my length is seven, because seven times seven is 49. So, let's answer it. The length of the square base is 7, what's my label? Inches. Not inches squared, not inches cubed, because we're not finding volume and we're not finding area. We're finding a distance. All right, next question. It's part of the same story. Find the surface area of the prism. So I want surface area. First step, I'm going to draw a net so I can see all those surfaces so I don't make mistakes. Don't like making mistakes. Make too many of them anyways. So it consists of four rectangles, tall rectangles, and on the top and bottom are your square bases. I'm just going to put them right here. So it's similar to the traditional cube net or rectangular prism net. Next, let's label it. So our length, width, and length, and widths go there, and the height of the prisms go right there. So what are my lengths? We just found them. It's going to be 7. And what are my widths? They're also seven. And what are the height uh, or the distance between the squares or height of the prism? That's going to be 11. All right, let's find the areas. We already know the area of the base squares, so I'm not going to write any additional formulas for that. We already did it. So I'm going to fill those in with 49 and 49. So the only work I need to show to prove what the areas are, are these four rectangles here. Let's start on the left. It's a rectangle, so A equals LW. So A equals 7 times 11. So A equals 77. Next, this one's also 7 by 11. This one's also 7 by 11. This one's also 7 by 11. So shortcut is, we already know them. Let's go ahead and fill them in. I want all six surfaces, because square prisms or rectangular prisms have six faces. So let's add our six numbers. So the 49 and 49 for our two square bases, plus the four 77s, plus the four 77s, what is that going to be? So 77 times 4, then add to 49s, we get 406. This is area, so it's going to be inches squared. So our answer is the surface area is 406 inches squared. All right, last example, 
a rectangular prism is 32 inches by 9 inches by 6 inches. It's going to be melted down because we weren't happy with it. And it's going to be reshaped into a cube. Find the length of each edge of the cube. So let's think about this. We have a rectangular prism. It was 32 by 9 by 6. So length by width by height. So length was 32, width was 9, and height of the prism was 6. Next, it's going to melt down. We're not getting rid of anything. We're just reshaping it because we weren't happy with that shape. So we're not getting ready, rid of any matter. So melt it down and reshape it into a cube because we're more happy with cubes, I guess. And on that one, we just want the length of each edge. And remember, they're all going to be the same because now it's going to be a cube. I think it kind of looks like more of a rectangular prism, but we're just going to assume that all sides are the same because I said so. Okay, so what do I do? First, I need to know how much stuff is in that rectangular prism. So find the volume. What formula am I going to use? There's the choice of V equals capital BH or V equals length times width times height. I'm going to go with the more simple one. Again, this one only works for rectangular prisms or cubes. It does not work for objects like that. Keep that in mind. Okay, so volume equals length is 32, width is 9, height is 6, so volume equals 32 times 9 is 288. Bring down our multiply by 6. So volume equals 1,728 inches to the power of 3. Is that my answer? No. That's the volume of the rectangular prism. And that actually also is now the volume of this cube. Matter was neither created nor destroyed in this example. We're simply melting it and reshaping it. So it's got the same volume. Okay, so what am I going to do? I need to write another formula and solve for length, width, and height. So let's think about this. One potential formula is V equals length times width times height. What do I know about length, width, and height of a cube? They're all the same. So it, I could think of it as V equals length times length times length, which is the same as V equals length cubed. This is the formula I'm going to use because it tells me exactly what I want to solve for with one letter instead of three different letters because I just want the length of each edge. So I'm going to use volume equals length cubed. This only works for cubes, cubes only. It's primarily used when you want to solve for the length. Okay, so what do I know? I know the volume, 1,728. Do I know the length? No, that's what I'm solving for. I'm solving for L. So I need to get L by itself. This problem looks similar to this problem. So what's the opposite of squaring a number? You know, what times what? That's square root. So what's the opposite of cubing a number? You know, what times what times what? Well, that's going to be cube root. Cube root looks like the square root, but with a 3 for cube. We're going to do it to both sides. Notice this number is way too large to, you know, try to figure out what times what times what is 1,728. So I'm going to show you in the calculator how to do that. Let's write just a couple little notes. This symbol is cube root. And again, it means what times itself is uh, three times is a number. Again, what times itself three times is a number. What times what times what? You cannot divide. If I divide by three, that's not going to tell me what times what times what is a number. I'm just going to show you. 
1728 divided by 3, I get 576. Is 576 times 576 times 5 is 576? Yet yeah, no. It doesn't work like that. So cube root and division, not the same thing. So how do I do cube root? You're going to push the 3 button, the 2nd button, and then what we call the caret key. It's to the power of, of button. And then you type in your number. So I'm going to push 3 for cube, 2nd, and the caret key. Now I have cube root. Now I type in my number, 1728. So again, I push 3 for cube, second caret for the root, and then 1728. And equals, I get 12. So 12 equals length. So I could check that. It is 12 times 12 times 12, 1728? Yes, it is. Again, not the same thing as division. So the length equals 12. That's exactly what I want. So let's answer it. The length of each edge is 12 inches. All right. I hope these few examples of volume and surface area have helped. If it has not, I hope you can find what you're looking for elsewhere. Y'all have a great day.